Superman issue one by Peter J. Tomasi on the writing and Patrick Gleason on the art. Mm-hmm. Um, or did they co-write this one as well? I can't remember. I think well, they're both they credited always... as storytellers. Right, yeah. okay. They're a team like Wade and Somni. Right, cool. cool. So. That's nice, that's nice. Mm-hmm. And uh, So I read Batman first this week. And I read this first, so... And I, I read Batman first, and not for a particular reason, just in that I almost just have this like set order that I read the books in now. Just, it's just habit, more than anything else. And I thought, oh man, that was great. That was, that was, that was, that was exceptional, almost right. And then I read mm-hmm. Superman issue one, and holy shit! Yep. I this. Now I don't want to get too hyperbolic because obviously things <laughs> could take a downturn and whatever, but. This the start. This this first chapter in the story, uh, Son of Superman, makes me think this might end up being a very special Superman story. Which is like in years from now, when people say, "Oh, what Superman book should I read as a first time reader?" Or oh, you read Birthright, you read For All Seasons, you read this, you read that, read Son of Superman. Like I, I feel like there might be in that discussion. Yeah, uh, this is this is already everything I wanted to be when I heard the premise and that it was from Tomasi and Gleason. Yeah. Yep. I just wanted to mention too that we got some of, of the family in action, but that Superman's kind of like grumpy Superman. So I was worried that was going to carry over here, yeah. and it didn't. So uh, I was worth, very pleased. It's worth mentioning this is set after that Action Comics arc. So yeah. just, just to keep things in yeah, right, yeah, yeah, your, yeah. your timeline, you know, things. But uh, so. so before we get to the main bulk of the story, let's talk about because it, it shifts narration to John after the first little bit. But let's talk about the first little bit first, where Clark's at the grave of a uh, of New Fifty Two Superman, and uh-huh. he's narrating and he's saying some nice things uh, as we've sort of seen the sentimentality before. Uh, the one moment to mention though is he puts his hand on the the ground, and I actually forgot this yeah. happened to it just now, just because the rest of the issue is yeah. so great. <laughs> yeah. Like I just kind of forgot about this. Uh, and there's like a, like it leaves like a sort of blue handprint thing on the. Gr- I'm not even sure exactly what's happening. It's like, it's like it burns the shape of his hand into the ground almost. Yeah, I I put that as he was just pushing down really hard, and it laid down the grass because he wasn't paying attention. Mm. See, I don't think you it know? is that because his narration. Yeah, it says that he's surprised that something just happened, and that you know, it, it references rebirth. He says that Mister Oz said that we were not what we thought we right. were. Mm-hmm. And it says now this, like this is weird. I think it is actually glowing blue. Yes, yeah, it's, it's the next tease of the mystery, mm. I guess. Nice. Um, so that, that's worth. But you can sort of see him in the last panel, opening his shirt, and he's saying how he's had the black suit. Uh, you know, he's put that away. You know. Yep. And then he's the, retired it. And then the page that we all fucking loved is there's just two page spread of just that the jacket ripping open to reveal the yep. with the single caption box saying the colors will fly. It's just page like, of the week. Yes. Yeah. Like just yes. Yep. And then we get another two-page spread, which is the title page of the comic, um, which I may more argue... More fantastic. It is more fantastic. I'd almost argue that yeah. wasting a two-page spread in this uh, would normally bother me, but it's just it's like, nah, it's, it's the start of the book. Well, especially it's, when they're back-to-back like that, but yeah. then you get to see Gleason just work his craft. Yeah. He just kills it, doesn't he? With the layouts and just how everything leads into another. Like, oh, man. I also so really good. love the, the muted colours as well. Like, mm-hmm. it's kind of... They well, pop out, but they're just just a little bit subdued, even the bright so ones. So, like, Gleason, I first came to him reading Green Lantern Corps, where he was drawing all these weird-looking aliens. Mm-hmm. and He almost had, like, a grotesque style uh, that was I thought was fitted more to shadows. And then you see him here, and it kind of reminded me of Tim Sales from For All Seasons. Yeah, I get it, especially this one on this page here where he's holding up the yeah. train mm-hmm. yeah it's just it's a very classic looking superman he's kind of blocky but in that old style way and like you said the the muted colors all just you know yeah it all just plays in uh, so i mean i think the first like four or five well it's actually more than that because it's like several double page spreads but like yeah. this first little chunk just got me so like enthused it was like yes right fucking right. superman we're in yep. and then the story shifts to narration from John, and it's from his perspective, which I, I've got a feeling a lot of this first arc will be, because of uh, right. what it's about. Yeah. And uh, we have to talk about Goldie. Poor Goldie. I couldn't believe they did that. That was 
that literally had me in shock. I was I... again, I was reading this on the bus. I was like, fuck. What do they just do? Uh, people, people who follow, I mean, if you if you've watched any of other stuff or listened to any of other stuff, other shows, you know that I have cats. I have three cats. I'm a cat person, and they'll probably pop up in this at some point. Possibly, they're all asleep right now. But uh... poor Goldie. I mean, I, th- I thought I thought he was going to save the day. I thought he was going to, you know, I thought John was going to oh. come in, take care of the the stupid bird that was going to attack the cat, and then. It's such. It's one of those times where the page turn really works because it's yeah. the the page ends before with just uh, you know the glint of it coming from his eye. And you think he's going to do it, and then you turn the page, and you just get that massive, explosive thing. I can't even describe it. This uh, this is like the first few pages like got me enthused, and then this section dragged me down but not in a bad way it was more like a, oh man yeah. this is heavy like this this is going to he's he's learning how to be superman's son right not just the title but he the, there's these new powers that he has no idea how to control yeah it's not going to shy away from the heavy no. stuff in this series exactly already um and that's also where we're, we're first introduced first of all uh john crying about what he's just done uh, it's heartbreaking but uh, we also get the first look at this neighbour, this girl about his age, who mm-hmm. I, right now I'm just going to say is going to be his Lana. <laughs> I'm just going to call it right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which I'm cool with. Uh, is she holding a skateboard? I can't remember. I think she was. Along those lines. Yeah. It's, she popped over. She She's from like, the farm next door. She's like a scared kid. But, uh, mm-hmm. So, I mean, yeah, so John comes back and... I don't know, she wasn't holding this. She was holding a, the milk the bag. Yeah, it was a bag of something. Yeah, it was, it was the way she was standing. It reminded me of someone like just a skater kid holding a skateboard. Do, do you know what the thing about that page is that gets me? It's not. I, I'm not sure whether he's more torn off about Goldie or the fact that he he broke his promise. Like that obviously means a lot to him because mm-hmm. that's what he goes straight to. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that just is. It shows that he is son of Superman. Like it's inbuilt into him almost. Mm, I feel like. I don't know. Um, I want vengeance for the cat. Yeah, well, I mean, he's owning up responsibility for what he did. I think, and... it's, t- I think it's time to get some kryptonite blades and go to town on this little <laughs> shit. <laughs> Jesus. He didn't do it on purpose, Pete. Jeez. He tried to <laughs> save the cat. Yeah. I'm going to grab his neck, like, like <laughs> bat tank style, and be like, do you bleed? <laughs> you will. <laughs> I apologise for referencing that piece of shit, by the way. As you should. Yeah, yeah that, that has no should. place on this podcast. Uh, no. but, so, so uh, what's her face here? What's her name? Is it Wendy? It's not Wendy, is it? No, I'm looking. God. Uh, Kat- Kathy. Kathy, there you go. Uh, so, yeah, so Kathy comes over and she's seen this. And I think this will be an interesting relationship that's going to blossom from this because she's seen what he can do. So she she'll be the one that he can confide in even more than his parents maybe, where if he's too scared to tell them something he'll tell her. Yeah, right. Because obviously he doesn't tell them about Goldie. Yeah, at least not yet. I mean. Yeah. Well, no, but they actively like Lois actually asks, "Has anyone seen seen Goldie?" And he says no. Yeah, and your stomach just turns a little bit for him. It's like, oh. Yeah. Uh. Especially as it follows immediately by her showing up, and we know that she knows what happened. Yeah. I love how she's just kind of looking at him the whole time with these big eyes, just like, eek. Don't say nothing. Don't provoke. Yeah. 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 And then we get to see Superman and Lois be stern parents when John throws a little bit of a, a little of an attitude yeah. fit. <laughs> Which he's like, what, 11, 12? Yeah, I think he's about 12, yeah. Yeah, yeah so that makes that's sense. about normal. Yeah. Being a preteen boy. Yeah. But... I, don't know, I thought it was interesting. You know, don't excuse, don't, don't use me as an excuse to be a bunch of liars. I think that's a really, really interesting. It's an yeah. interesting theme to poke at that he feels that like he's the excuse, which is we know is ridiculous because he was hiding who he was for decades. Yeah, but I mean, they're not, they're not the average DCU. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're from a, a different. I, I don't know if it's a timeline or, or what it is anymore, but. <laughs> Yeah, they're not like the rest. There's more to it. But then, and yeah. uh, this is this is the thing. Like, so we open with the really exciting stuff. Then we have the scene with the cat. And then it gives me this other great scene which just drew me in. And it's this idea that from his bedroom, he sees 
like Wonder Woman and Batman show up to talk to Superman. And mm-hmm. this is obviously going to tie in, to, at least this meeting will tie into the first Justice League arc because this is them showing up and being like, who the hell are you now that you're here? And they look scary as hell. Yeah. Because the way yeah. that the shadows hit them, they're so intimidating. No, absolutely. Um, Don't I, forget the fact that Wonder Woman has her sword out. You know, that's that's yeah. always immediately more intimidating. Oh, exactly, yep. exactly. But, it's, but it, was all, it was all from his point of view, which is, again, them being scary. Mm-hmm. Uh, him using his super hearing, which I imagine is just kicking in yep. to try and, and we get like, little fragments of the conversation. And that, that's how we see where this fits in. This will fit in between Action Comics' first arc and Justice League's first arc with them. And like, right, you're here, who are you? Explain yourself. As they would. You know? Um, but then Wonder Woman and Batman catch him watching or listening. Yep. And I, I don't think I've ever sympathised with a, uh, oh shit, let me hide another dead moment than I have with yeah. Batman catching you, he's dropping on him. Yep. <laughs> I love how Batman's like, he's listening, like he knows, uh, he yeah. knows, he's got the superhero and he's like, nope, not having this. Yeah, and then, again, sticking with the dark, uh, Daddy Superman shows up and, you know, that's, this is how the book ends, it's him like coming out of the shadows and be like, you're coming with me now, uh, and I, obviously that's going to. And I'm wondering what he's going to show him or take him in the next art, uh, next issue. But uh, that entire last section, it was just this, this, this weird feeling of being like, from a kid's perspective, where like other members of the Justice League are showing up outside your house. Mm-hmm. It kind of makes you feel the the added vulnerability, which is weird considering his powers, but like his mindset. And yeah. you really, because it's all from his perspective, you get inside that really well. I think it helps that the art is all that those angles. It's all drawn from, like that yeah. looking down at them. Oh yeah, absolutely. And then even when Superman comes out at the end, it's like a low angle looking up at him, as if like yeah. you're on the floor looking up at Superman. Yeah, it's like he is above you. He is intimidating, even though he is Superman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's actually like really impressive that given the fact that this kid is, you know, if he's not completely indestructible yet, he is getting there. He's yeah. getting all these powers, and they've still made, found a way to make him vulnerable and make it make mm-hmm. him fear for him. Not because we think they're going to hurt him, but because as a kid, you fear your parents, you fear being told off for something you're not meant he, to do. He yeah. got caught listening when he wasn't supposed to. Yeah. You know, but yeah, and then just the the way that the shadows hit that Superman image is just oh, it looks so great. It is. It is. It is Gleason doing it with those dark shadows, like you told me mm-hmm. earlier, and just it's yep. fantastic. Oh, great. Uh, so that's Superman. Uh, 